Some of these chapters are easier to write than others. This is one of those chapters where I feel a wide range of emotions about it, but the one that always wins out in the end is... gross. Unless this is the first chapter you're reading, you'll already know that I'm a ghoul. Being a ghoul means I've talked with a lot of other ghouls in my nearly 200 years of being this way. In general, that's because a lot of normal ponies don't like to talk to ghouls. They can't really be blamed for feeling that way, since most ghouls are ferals that will try to eat those normal ponies. Obviously, this is a scary thing to be on the receiving end of, but besides a normal fear response, the idea of ponies eating ponies is quite disturbing. Unfortunately, cannibalism is not a new thing with the creation of ghouls. There are a few scattered stories that I've heard about in the past. Specifically, there was this one unicorn who I knew from before the war who loved reading about creepy magic history. She wore a lot of black. In those days, cannibalism always had something to do with a curse. Like, when you were cursed, you had to eat your family or friends, or cursed because you ate your family and friends. It's one of the reasons why a lot of ponies think ghoulism has some kind of supernatural cause behind it. That it's a fate they deserved for some kind of wrong they did in their life. I'm not going to say that I'm perfect, but I don't think I've done anything that bad. And then again, I'm also not feral after nearly two centuries, so maybe that's related? Anyway, this chapter isn't so much about ghouls. Ferals don't just eat ponies, they'll attack anything that isn't a ghoul. In fact, they'll attack each other too. I don't know why, but I've seen it happen. It is really scary. Because life can be hard in the wasteland, every once in a while someone is faced with the choice of becoming a cannibal or starving to death. Maybe you get trapped in some ruins somewhere, and there's nothing to eat but the body of the raider that you killed. Some ponies can forgive that, but a lot of them can't. I've met a lot of ponies that have had to do that because normal ponies won't talk to them. So they get ostracized, just like ghouls. One mare I knew about had her family farm burned down by raiders. When she was traveling to another settlement that she knew about, her husband had died. They still had an infant baby who was still breastfeeding, but she had nothing to eat. It was a really empty patch of land, and she was losing her strength to go on. If she died, their baby would have died too. So she ended up eating part of her husband's leg to make it in the end. Even though her baby hadn't done it directly, she still never told their daughter. She tried to move on, but she never forgets. While cannibalism might be a necessary part for survival, there is the real possibility that it will stain you in some supernatural way. No matter how many unicorns I've asked, none of them can give me a straight answer on that. Beyond the realms of magic, it can also have some very dangerous effects on your health. I had to visit the doctor in the settlement once when I had accidentally flown into an old billboard and dislocated both of my wings. They wouldn't heal themselves until he set them back into place. Anyway, he was very chatty and ended up mentioning something that he had treated very recently. Their village had been attacked over the course of several weeks by someone they had called the Chuckling Chopper. He was a very deranged earth pony buck who would attack you when you were alone and chop you into pieces. Then he would put those pieces in a fridge and eat everyone he killed. Surprisingly, the villagers finally caught him by laying a trap. Instead of just killing him, the doctor tried talking to him and running through some tests to see what had made him go so crazy. He talked about the different creatures he had killed and eaten to survive in the Badlands. Ponies are herbivores by nature, but they've had to eat other things to survive, such as rad roaches or other mutated animals. This book had done the same thing, but then said that a packet of strange meat he had bought from a bender made him feel different. After that, he had killed a griffin, which he said tasted like chicken, then eventually moved to ponies. The doctor thinks that the strange meat he had bought was pony meat that the vendor had killed. Eating the pony meat might have given him something called prion disease. It's something that happens when these little proteins in your brain mutate in weird ways, 
that caused other proteins to mutate too. The crazier the disease made him, the more he wanted to eat pony meat, even though he wasn't a ghoul. That's why he started chuckling madly while doing it too. When they finally killed him, the doctor autopsied his brain and found it to be full of holes like Swiss cheese. So hopefully you haven't thrown up by now because here's the real lesson from this chapter. Obviously cannibalism is a horrible thing to have to resort to. If you're not doing it to survive, there's a good chance that it could affect your soul with some kind of dark magic. There's also a very big risk to eating pony flesh, even your own, that could make you crazy. The prion diseases have no cure. They're so rare even unicorns don't have any spells to treat them. If you absolutely must eat some ponies to survive though, it's best to eat the muscle meat like their legs and butt. It will give you the most amount of energy while having to do the least bit of horrible things. You should also never, ever eat their brains. While they are apparently nutritious according to the Chuckling Chopper, they also have the highest chance of giving you the irreversible prion disease according to the doctor. And of course, to avoid ever having to resort to that at all, you should keep at least a few weeks worth of dry or packaged food on you. That way you can survive for a while if you are stuck someplace without having to eat anyone.